All right, welcome to the review for transformations. So we began this unit before spring break with some basic lessons about how to name lines and angles. But that's a line, and you know it's a line because it has arrows on the end, both ends. My lines go on forever. So this is line AR, or you could call it line RA. Lines, oops, the naming of a line doesn't tell you where the letters are along the line. So this is a line. The next one is a segment, or not a line segment, part of a line. Right? A line goes on forever. This is part of it. And so we know that because the points on the end are called an end point. One word. I should write that like one word. So this is an end point. So a line segment is always named by the end points. And notice the symbol for line segment does not have the points on it. And you can call it line segment CM or line segment MC. The last thing is called a ray. Now, rays are the tricky one. The end point, the point on the end, has to go first. You cannot call this HV. It is ray VH. And doesn't if we had ray VH going like that, right? We would not change the symbol, right? The end point goes first in a ray. And you always use two letters. If there are three letters on it, then you pick right so if say there's an x there if you say cx that's just this part of that line segment not the whole thing if i have an x on this one somewhere you, you pick any two of the letters and name it with any two All right so for naming of an angle we need three letters but you can't just use them in any order the vertex the corner of this angle is right there. That's called the vertex. And so that letter must go in the middle. So you can call it RPT or angle TPR. You cannot call this angle P. So do not write that on the test because in this case, because there's four angle P's in this picture, at least. And so you can't use just the one letter name. All right, early in the year, we learned that the slope of parallel lines were the same. The slope of perpendicular lines are the negative reciprocals. So the slope here is negative four. So we have to take that and flip it over and make it its opposite. So any line, let's, this line, let's draw a little sketch. One, oh, positive seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And slope of negative four, down four and over one. So this original line looked like that. The line that is any line that's perpendicular to it right any line let's do the simplest one this one right there any line that's perpendicular to it will have a slope that's the negative reciprocal one four right now you could pick ones with different y intercepts right and that would be y equals one fourth x plus three these if it's one fourth and negative four they have to be perpendicular to each other at 90 degrees and so that was getting ready for some of the stuff that was coming in transformation. The second lesson was about congruence, right? Because transformed objects are usually congruent except for dilation. So triangle GPK is congruent to. That's what that symbol means. Do not use an equal sign. It's an equal sign with a tilde. You have to go in the same order. So we're writing, this is called a congruent statement. So you have to put Z first, because G is 90 degrees, Z is 90 degrees. So we have to find the one that matches P, that's called an arc mark. And so T must go second, because it also has two arc marks. And K was last with one arc mark, so H goes last in the other one. All right, so you must have the letters in the correct order. And you'll notice that then the sides match up, the ones with the same tick marks will be matching. All right, so if angle P here is 30 degrees, what's the measure of K? Oh, all right, so G, well, G is 90, P is 30, and K, all three of those have to add up to one number, They right? The angles of a triangle always add up to 180. 
So this is 120 plus K equals 180. Obviously, you could do this in your head. I'm just going to write it out. And K equals 60 degrees. If triangle ADF, so this is a new problem, right? This is not what we did above there. If triangle ADF is congruent to MSU, then angle A must be congruent to angle M, right? Because the order totally matters. Side DF or line segment DF must be congruent to SU. Could you write it as US because it's a side can be with either order? Yes, but why would you do that? Keep it in the same order. Side FA, so that's these two letters, must be the exact same length as side UM or MU. All right, that brings us to our translation. Translate S to U, four units right and five units down. So one, two, three, four units right, and one, two, three, four, five units down. Now, you're not going to be doing any actual transformations on a computer test. There'll be some multiple choice questions with pictures, but there'll, you will be asked for coordinates. All right, so that I just took U, and now U prime is over here at 3, negative 3. Now let's just double check our math. Four units right means add four to the x coordinate. Did I get a three? Yes. And five units down means subtract five from the y coordinate. Yeah, that worked out. S prime, so these are all add four, subtract five. So negative four goes to, this one goes to zero, negative three. And this one goes to, t prime is at two, zero and we get this new object here. All right, so well, let me, I should label it T prime, S prime, and U prime before I do the next one. All right, so now we're gonna take object V and reflect it across the Y axis. Be careful, all right, yeah, you know, across the X axis, the other one's in the way here, but always read it, across the Y axis. So we're reflecting, let's use a different color. Right, it's got to be the same exact distance away. So that's at negative four. This is at positive four. So that's V prime. So what happens when you reflect an object? Well, let's see. The one that's at negative four, negative five is now at four, negative five. Yeah, when you crawl, reflect across Y, Y stays the same. And the x coordinate becomes its opposite. Let's just double check that. We have a test tomorrow. So the one at negative 4, negative 9 is now there at 4, negative 9. Yeah, the one at negative 1, negative 8 is now at 1, negative 8. Yeah, so when you reflect across y, the y coordinate stays the same. The x flips to its opposite. When you reflect across x, X coordinate stays the same, Y coordinate becomes its opposite, but you can always draw yourself a little sketch. All right, translate M from five, negative one, three units left and six units down. All right, so three units left, subtract three from X, six units down, subtract six from Y. So she should be at two, negative seven. Now, if you forget all that, you could draw a little sketch. One, two, three, four, five, negative one, Right, three units left, one, two, three, and then six units down from there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all right, and you're at two, negative seven, all right. Describe the translation that occurred of D, line segment DE to D prime E prime. So let's look right here. So it looks like we subtracted five from the X coordinate, did we do, let's check the other one just to see. Oh, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Don't listen to me. We're going this way. D to D prime. So we subtracted 7 from the x coordinate. Did we subtract 7 from the other x coordinate? Yeah, we did. Negative 3 minus 7, negative 10. So if we subtract the 7, we went 7 units left. 
And then from negative four to negative one to positive four, we added five. Did we add five over here? Yeah, we did. And so we went five units up, right? And we said it was a translation. That's why we knew it wasn't a reflection or something else. If DE is approximately 8.6 units long, how long is D prime E prime? Well, if it was a translation, it must be congruent, right? So it has to be the same. Rotate G 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin, right? So it has to stay the same distance away from the origin. That's a two, two. We're gonna come over here. You always end up for a 90 degree rotation, you end up one quadrant over. So that point's gonna be right there. Now we're rotating it, right? You could turn your paper 90 degrees and see the answer. So we're rotating it. We're not just moving it over there. That would be a translation. And this side, this was at seven, right? This was at four, seven. So we better end up at negative seven, four. There. And this would be right there. There's G prime. That's a 90 degree counterclockwise Rotation around the origin. So let's see this. 2, 2 ended up at negative 2, 2. 4, 2 right there ended up at negative 2, 4. And 4, 7 ended up at negative 7, positive 4. So now I don't expect you to memorize these patterns. But what's helpful about this is that you know, right, this shouldn't be a 3, right? There's, you know that there's a pattern here, right? And what goes on here is this one comes over here and becomes its opposite. And the other one goes over there and stays the same. And there's a better drawing of it for G prime. All right, rotate G, that's the original one, 180 degrees counterclockwise around the origin. I, I didn't need to say counterclockwise. So I've already done 90. So you just do another 90, that's not so hard. Right. So again, it's got to, I almost started in the wrong place, right? This is it, right? It's got to be in that same corner, right? And it's got to be down here at seven still. It's got to be there. So when you go another 90, right, you'll come over here. Now let's see this. This is at negative two, negative two. It seems like in a 180 degree rotation, the coordinates become their opposites. Let's see. 4, 2. Did that be, go to negative 4, negative 2? Yeah, it did. And did 4, 7 go to negative 4, negative 7? Yeah, no, no switching of the positions here with a 180. They just become their opposites. So that is, right, two 90s, right? If you, you could have rotated this twice, 90 degrees counterclockwise, and you would have gotten the 180 degree rotation. There it is a little nicer. And we'll call this G double prime, right? If you take a prime, although I didn't, well, it works here. Although I started at G, you could call it another G prime. All right, so now we're dilating triangle BCD with a scale factor of a half, right? So that means we're multiplying all these coordinates by one half. And so B prime should be at three, negative three. C prime should be at eight, whoop, four, negative five. And D prime should be at two, negative five. So let's see if that worked out. Three, negative three for B prime. And C prime four, negative five. And D prime two, negative five. And we get a triangle half as big and half as half the way closer to the origin. There's a nicer drawing of it. Find the length of each side. Okay. So, well, this side is four and it's half as big, so that one's two. Okay. So now you've got to use Pythagorean theorem to find these diagonal sides. So let's do this one right here. So let's draw a little right triangle. So this is one and this is two and we're finding this distance. One squared plus two squared equals d squared. One plus four equals d squared. 
5 equals d squared. That means d equals the square root of 5 here. So, right, most right triangles have an irrational side. So this, this is an irrational side of an isosceles triangle because these are both the same. So we have two sides that are the square root of 5 and one that's 2. Now, the bigger one is a dilation is twice as big, right? It, right, the dilation was a half. So this one better be 2 times the square root of 5, and this one better be 2 times the square root of 5. Now, right, again, we could have done it the other way. I'll do it the other way just to show it. So we're trying to find this side here. And if I make a little right triangle in there, well, this picture isn't so great. Ah, let's try better. Okay. All right, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is 2 at the bottom. Right, we're finding this. It's 2 squared plus 4 squared equals d squared. I'm just checking my work. You don't have to do it twice. So 20 equals d squared. So d equals the square root of 20. Square root of 20, got to simplify your square root. That's the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, also known as 2 times the square root of 5 is that distance. But that's what we got the other way. What was the scale factor here? From M, we got to check which direction. Were we going smaller or bigger? Right? If we're going smaller, it'd be a fraction. If it's going bigger, it's a whole number. Yeah, I didn't do. I'm not going. You could, by the way, have a scale factor of 2.5 or 2.3 or 2.5. Just didn't do that. That'd be a pain in the graph. All right. So this is at 0, 2, and this is at 0, 10. That's looking like a scale factor of 5. You can just write 5 as the scale factor. Let's just double check another point. All right, so this one over here is 0, negative 1. Are we 0, negative 1? Are we at 0, negative 5? Yeah. Yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, this is what, say, uh, 1 and 1 half. So then we would get it 5, 3 and a half, right? right. 3 and a half? No, 5, 2 and a half. Right, because it would be 1 half times 5 is 5 halves, or 5, 2 and a half, and this one is actually at negative 5, 2 and a half. But you really only need one. They all should be the same. What is the term for objects that are the same shape but different sizes? The term for that, this is this is a dilation, but that's not what I'm asking here. I'm asking for the term similar. Objects that are the same size and shape are congruent. Objects that are different sizes are called similar. Similar has a very specific uh, meaning in math. All right, so then last thing we did was we combine these in sequences. N to M. So that's a rotation, and it's 90 degrees counterclockwise. All right, you need to put counterclockwise, please, on the test. M to P. Well, that's a translation, right? It's facing exactly the same way. How much? Well, that's at 1, and now it's at negative 9. So that seems like 10 units down. P to O. Well, we flipped it. That's a reflection. And it's across the y-axis. N to O. How do we get from N to O? Well, it's a combination of all the above. Right? We did N to M, M to P, P to O, combination of the above. You're not going to get there directly with any one or two of these moves. Determine the transformation used between J and J prime. Okay, so it has two blanks, so there must be two moves required. And often there's more than one right answer here. I'm going to start with reflection across the y-axis. So that's going to get me here. All right, oops, I didn't draw it correctly. All right. And then to get down here, we have a translation. 
and it's a translation. We're at 1, and we're getting up at negative 9, 10 units down. Now, was that the only right answer? No, you absolutely could have translated 10 units down and then reflected across the y-axis second. Find the areas of J and J prime. Yes, this is a review of a bunch of uh, stuff you should have learned last year. So that's a trapezoid. Triangles, it's one half base times height. That's for a triangle. All right, this is a trapezoid. A trapezoid has two parallel sides and two sides that are not parallel. And so the area, you don't need Pythagorean theorem here, luckily, right? Because this, you take the bases are the ones that are nice and easy. So this one is two and this one is four. So one half and two plus four. And the height is not this side. It's the dis distance straight between them. And so it's three. And so it's one half times six times three, also known as three times three. And this is an area, this is nine square units. And they're congruent, so they have to be the same. All right, so then we, I did these uh, review out of order. Usually I do it in the order we did it. We did translation of functions uh, vertically up and down. If one half x plus five were translated six spaces down, write the equation of g of x. You just subtract six from there. So it's f of x or g of x is one half x, not minus six, five minus six is minus one. Right, so it goes down, right, six places. And so every point along here, right, this has a slope of one half, by the way, that can be helpful to draw the new one. And right, so this new one should be parallel to the old one and look like that. Write a linear function that is perpendicular to one half x plus five. Now, it would also be perpendicular to g of x here, right? Perpendicular lines have slopes that are the negative reciprocal. So if it's one half, you flip that over, make two, and make it the negative reciprocal. So that's the slope of every perpendicular line. So let's use g of x here again, or let's use h of x. You can go through the alphabet. h of x, either one is fine. So write a linear function that is with the same y-intercept, so negative 2x plus 5. Right? It could be any other y-intercept. So the perpendicular one here right is negative two slope right looks like that right a perpendicular line makes a 90 degree actually makes four 90 degree angles so there right there's a 90 degree notice it's perpendicular there it's perpendicular there and any of these lines that are perpendicular they all have a slope of negative two they have different y intercepts than the one we drew but they all have a slope of negative two and the Perpendicular lines, the slope is the negative reciprocal. All right, I'm making a mess here, so let's see what this says. All right, so if f of x equals x squared minus 9 were translated six places up, write the equation of g of x. So I'm not going to draw that because it's going to make a mess. So we have this, and we're going six places up. We add 6 to negative 9. That's all you do. So that g of x... You go six places up, it's x squared minus three. And it'll have a y-intercept right there. Did I draw that? I don't think so. Final question. Determine the transformations used between n and n prime. So how did I get <coughs> over there? Well, they're facing at 90 degrees to each other. So there must be a rotation of 90 degrees and counterclockwise. And we did a lot, we mostly focused on rotations of 90 degrees. In high school, you will do other rotations, 270 and so on, and not always around the origin. All our rotations uh, were 90 degrees around the origin. So if I rotate that, right, this is at 2, 1. I should be at 1, 2, negative 1, 2 there. And this is 2, 5, right? So I should end up at negative 5, 2 there. And I should have some object that looks like this. 
right? You've got to have the same numbers or patterns here. So I rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise, and then we're going up there. So there's a translation. And so that, that was at three, and that's at 10. That seems seven units up. What happened to the lengths of the sides, the measure of the angles, the perimeter, and the area? They're all the same, but let's say the objects are objects with an O. Objects are congruent. All right, good luck on the test.